Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update by RRG Research for Monday the 6th of February. And I'm recording it on Friday the 3rd in the morning. Uh, markets at the moment are still relatively quiet and I think they're in anticipation and waiting for all the macroeconomic figures that are coming out today, especially in the US. So we're gonna deal with what we have at the moment. And um, the RRG for international indices, which is on the screen right now, shows uh, a really long tail for the Hang Seng uh, index. And that's interesting because we dealt with that a couple of uh, episodes ago. Uh, we showed the improvement of the Hang Seng and it's paying off right now with that really long tail powering into that leading quadrant. This is a weekly RRG, so it's quite a long term move. But more importantly, what you can see is that um, especially the US, the US uh, indices are starting to turn around. You can see a turnaround and you can see that the, the dominance of Europe or non-US countries, uh, if you wish, is starting to fade a little bit. So we've got the stocks uh, going the other way. We've got DAX, we've got CAC, we've got um, the Australia. And then you can see the, the Dow Jones is the, the, is the real outlier in the US, or maybe it's, it's still strong and it starts to turn up here. But the Russell, the S&P, especially the NASDAQ is really picking up rapidly. We had a massive rally yesterday, of course. Um, yesterday, as in Thursday last week, when you hear this. So um, that's basically the big picture that I want to share with you. And um, if we just zoom in here and forget that Hang Seng for a little while, we can see that improvement in the Russell in the S&P. Um, UK doing very nicely, the FTSE. Um, and then here is where your uh, deterioration is starting to come in. These, these moves are starting to fade and that's also the case for uh, the Hang Seng. We're starting to lose momentum there and that's even better visible when we move to the daily version of the chart. There you can see the improvement for the US really. So here's the NASDAQ that's like this is a five day tail and if we play that back a little bit then you can see that that improvement already started. Um, somewhere mid-January, the 16th, this is the date, and then we move forward, moving into that leading quadrant with the NASDAQ, and you can see the S&P following suit. You can see the, uh, the sharp hook here in the Russell. So that's that one. And you can see the deterioration in the Hang Seng and like the Europeans here. UK is on, on the um, inside the lagging quadrant on this daily RRG as well. So the, the, the dominance of non-US countries is fading. Uh, Nikkei rolling over right here. And the S&P seems to be, or the US seems to be coming back into play. I think that's the main theme that we're dealing with here. Now, <clears throat> I want to uh, go and watch to the uh, Hang Seng Index, because that's obviously the one that had a really big move. And here's the chart that you've seen maybe a few times already when I did the show here. and. What I'm watching right now is you can see that massive rally of the Hang Seng. We, we dropped out of that falling channel, we got back into it. And I think I shared with you that when you see a move that is coming out of a channel, which is initially pretty negative and you would expect an acceleration, that acceleration came but only very shortly and then we come back into the channel. And when you come back into the channel, you can very often see a return to the top, to the opposite side of the channel. It goes both ways. Even if you break out to the upside and you get back into that rising channel, you see a, a drop to the lower boundary. So here um, we, we witnessed the Hang Seng coming back into that channel. Then there was a uh, first resistance, old support level as first resistance that was taken out. Then we hesitated for like two or three weeks against that top of that channel and then we broke and we rallied and now we are at a very important level because that what this is um, 22 and a half thousand is a very important and you can see that even if you go further back you can see that that area played a role uh, either as support or resistance so this week the Hang Seng is coming off that level um, which is quite significant because it means that this old support level is now coming back as resistance. Um, so the upside for the Hang Seng Index is now getting very limited. We need to overcome that hurdle before we, get, we can unlock new upside potential. But the question is whether that will happen uh, immediately or we need a little bit more of a correction. And for that, we need to move to the daily chart for the Hang Seng. 
and I think you can agree with me or you will agree with me that um, this is this is pattern is rolling over. You can see that we're kind of taking out that previous low here. So this is a topish pattern. We have a first lower high into place on this lower time frame. So it looks as if we're on the, on the, on the verge of kind of breaking this move here, this trend that started at the start of November last year. And, uh, and that's going to give us a little bit more of a correction. You can see that the relative strength lines are, uh, so the RRG lines are rolling over. That's what's causing that tail uh, to roll over and, and go into that weakening quadrant on that daily RRG. Uh, and if we look at some of these more standard indicators, we can see that the RSI just dropped from, above, from, from very high levels back into uh, the 70 to 30 range. That's, I don't really like to talk about signals, but it's, it indi it's an indication that there is a loss of momentum going on. And you can see a similar pattern with the MACD that has a negative crossover in place right now. So I think that the, uh, the move in the Hang Seng is over, um, at least for the near term. And we see an improvement in uh, US indie shares. So some kind of a play being looking for long positions in US based indie shares and, and maybe look for offset shorts in uh, either European or Asian indexes seems to be a good approach for the market right now. Um, if, we, if we move to the US, because we see that strength in the US going, and um, I think one of the most important charts to watch there is the growth value rotation. And I've shown this a few times before here, and here it is again. We had, of course, the dominance of value for a very long time. So um, this is a weekly RRG. So if I scroll back in time, then you can see here the improvement of value, which uh, basically picked up again. And this is uh, somewhere in October. You can see a renewed um, improvement for value. And that has lasted until probably like right here, which is uh, mid-January. And then we saw value starting to pick over quite aggressively. That was a quite aggressive hook. The big picture value is still in favor, but we can see a really serious improvement for growth stocks at the moment. And that also translates um, onto the direct comparison. Here's the long-term comparison of growth versus value. And you can see that massive double top formation. We discussed that before, that breakout. That was a really good trigger um, for to get out of growth and, and be more defensively positioned into value stocks. We actually uh, met pretty much to the dot the, the target that you could set based on that double, double top pattern. So what you can do is you can take the height of that pattern, project it downwards, and that's your initial target for a double top pattern. So we, we reached that level and then from that we're now shooting off really aggressively in favor of growth stocks. And um, we had of course the Nasdaq jumping. Uh, it's going to be very interesting today uh, what's going to happen in the US with these tech stocks because Amazon, Google, Apple all reported earnings after hours and they missed their estimates. So uh, they were up really big time um, yesterday during trading and then the earnings came in, they all missed it. So I'm going to be very curious to see how the market responds to that. Uh, if it's going to get, if they're going to give back all of their gains that were made yesterday or will the market stabilize and will the improvement continue? Um, looking at this chart here, I'd say that there is still a little bit of upside for growth uh, over value, possibly going back to that breakout level and then we'll have to make a new assessment. If I take that to another level to the sector based um, analysis, then we have the RRG looking for uh, looking at US sectors. And um, you can see the, the turnaround for technology. So here that big, that big uh, dot is the technology sector. And you can see how that improved very recently. Um, by the way, these dots are, uh, they represent the market capitalization of those sectors. So um, big dots like uh, information technology and here consumer discretionary, uh, healthcare also. These are the big sectors. These are the <coughs> big market cap sectors and the smaller ones like <coughs> energy and utilities uh, have smaller dots. So that's that's what you're looking at. Um, you can see the improvement in information technology. You can also see the improvement of consumer discretionary coming out of a very low uh, position inside the lagging quadrant. So that's really picking up. And here you got telecom services, which obviously is driven uh, for big time by Meta, which is up like, I don't know, 25, 26% yesterday. So that really is driving that uh, telecommunications sector higher, which we had 
um, well, not really, I'm not going to say that we had anticipated, but the telecommunications sector was doing really, really well um, for the last couple of weeks. But the most important thing that um, a, a, of my observation right now in this US, in this sector rotation picture is that um, what you see is that especially the defensive sectors are losing strength. And when we talk about uh, defensive sectors, we're talking about utilities. We talk about consumer staples and we talk about healthcare. And all three of these sectors have turned around and has, have started to move to that southwestern corner, towards that lagging quadrant. And <clears throat> usually, and I, I, the, the reason I'm talking to you about that is because at the end of 2021, we had those defensive sectors being really strong. They were rotating into the leading quadrant while the market was still. Uh, going higher, which is weird because usually you would expect those defensive sectors to actually be very strong when the market is under pressure. And that wasn't the case. So that was a very early warning signal that under the hood something was going on. The, the um, money flow into those defensive sectors at that time was so strong that they were able to actually push the S&P higher. Um, obviously, we all know what happened. That whole thing deteriorated. Um, defensive sectors were the leading factor for pretty much all of 2022. Um, and what we're seeing now is that that rotation, that rotation to more negative for defensive sectors, while the market was, because it happened, it, it already happened um, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, we're kind of late to the game with this show here, but I think the uh, the picture is pretty clear. It's still it's still ongoing. You saw that these staples and healthcare were rolling over um, while the market was still under pressure. And when when these anomalies um, are playing out or or occurring, that's when you really start to uh, need to start paying attention, because when the defensive sectors roll over while the market is still under pressure, it means that investors are moving out of these defensive sectors, not necessarily straight into offense, although it looks like they were doing that uh, very recently, um, but they're moving out of defense. So they're, they're, they're leaving their defensive positions. And that is, that is telling you something. And that's the, that's the image that we had here for those defensive sectors over the last couple of weeks. And it looks as if we're now in that turnaround phase and we're now the offensive uh, sectors are picking up. So that's information technology, that's consumer discretionary, uh, that's real estate. Uh, and, and you can see where the money moves out of. So you can see financials, industrials, energy is, is losing um, a lot of relative momentum. And I'm going to give you, uh, to wrap up this show, a very aggressive position here in consumer discretionary because Obviously, it went through a massive decline from a, on a relative and a price based. But if I look at the chart of the consumer discretionary index, there's, a couple of, there's, there's actually two things that are really interesting. The first one is the improvement of relative strength. We've, saw, we've seen that on the RRG. But the one that I really like, and it's, this is a very clean chart, but also a very clean pattern that's playing out here. Um, and uh, this is called a falling wedge. Falling wedges are uh, generally um, uh, considered to be bullish patterns. And they can either occur as a continuation, so you would see a, uh, a stock or a market that moves up and then consolidates in that wedge-like formation. And then when it breaks out, it's the trigger for a continuation of that rally. Right now, we see that falling wedge as a reversal pattern. We've, we're, we're coming down from uh, levels around 1700 all the way back to 1000. And the since, let's say this was mid 2022, we see that wedge formation forming. And then two weeks ago, we came out of it and we're now pushing higher. We've already taken out the previous highs. And the price target that you can attach to this falling wedge pattern is the, uh, the starter, the highest level inside the pattern. And for um, Consumer discretionary, that means somewhere around 1400, just below 1400. That gives you a nice tradable opportunity uh, inside a sector. And this is tradable stuff. Um, you can play it with the ETFs. There, there's a ton of uh, CFDs available on that on the CMC platform. Um, so I think that these, this sector um, is in for a, uh, for a good treat and it could reach 
that highest level. Put your stop losses um, uh, at decent levels, I would say somewhere below this breakout level to, uh, to protect any um, decline, protect it against any declines. So um, that's what I want to leave it at for this week. Um, next week we'll be back again and then we'll be looking at some individual stocks uh, again. So thank you for watching uh, and I uh, hope to see you again next week at a new episode by RIG Research. Same time, same place.